guys, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, March 6th, and I am back for my update. I hope you have all been well, and I believe this is floss tube number 31. Uh, so it has been two weeks since my last update, and um, I hope that you've been stitching all of the things, having fun doing it. Um, the very first part of, because the way that I, I, you know, I kind of do my stitching uh, like my videos, you know, I, I have like a two week rotation. And I would say the first part of my rotation, I got a lot of stitching done and I was pretty happy. And then this week, oh, I would probably give myself a C plus uh, because there was three days that I ended up falling down the family search uh, website and uh, I lost like Whole hours and I it didn't just affect my stitching it affected my, my quilting and it also affected the project bag making and I realized that I need to start like setting a timer or something because the moment I get on there I I'm on there for like three hours and I don't intended I don't intend to be I just think oh, I'm just gonna be on here for like 15 minutes just 15 minutes and then the next thing I know I look up and it's you know three hours later I know a lot of people who do like the family search or the ancestry.com say the same thing. It just, it just takes so much of your life away. So, but I do have progress to show. It's not like I, I've been completely slacking. It's just, I didn't get as much stitching done as I wanted to. Um, I am going to share just a teensy tiny little bit of a life update. Um, and I know that a lot of people, they don't, I, it goes back and forth. Some, a lot of people don't care about the life. They like hearing the life updates, but every once in a while you get like one or two people that are like, well, you know, I, I don't really want to hear about your life. Um, but I am going to mention it. Um, and that is that uh, my baby niece was born on Wednesday and she is absolutely perfect in every way. Uh, her name is Madeline Grace and we, we just love and adore her and we cannot wait to meet her and both her and mom are doing fantastic. Her siblings love her. And so I am happy to hear that. Um, but yeah, I cannot wait to see uh, Madeline and I am so excited. Um, I know when I sent a picture to Allison, she was excited that it's another uh, girl cousin because for a long time it was all boys and um, now she's got two. So, well, just on my side of the family. Um, on my husband's side, she has girl cousins. <laughs> so anyway, so we are just thrilled and we're over the moon and congratulations to my brother, Brad, and my sister-in-law, Rachel. We are so happy for you guys and we can't wait to meet little Madeline and she's gorgeous. So that was the, the good little bit of news that I received this week. Um, the day that she was born, it was sort of like a cycle of life. Um, I was at a funeral and when I got, um, I was actually on my way to the funeral when I got the pictures that she had been born. So it was a, um, like that circle of life that they always talk about and uh, bittersweet, you know, as we say goodbye to one person and welcome a new life into the world. Um, also, um, so at the beginning of my videos, the last couple of ones, I decided to add, um, you know, cause I do get a lot of questions. And so I thought, well, I will do like a lot of other floss tubers do. And I will answer them at the beginning of the video because it's just easier to sort of have a structure. Um, otherwise things get forgotten. The few videos that I did where I did not really have a plan and it wasn't really like thought out. There was a lot of stuff I left out and I only had one person complain that they did not like the questions that they felt that the questions should be at the end with the quilting. Um, but for me personally, it's just way easier to do it at the beginning and to just to sort of, you know, follow a routine. Um, this video, I only have two questions um, that I pulled and I just pulled them from my last video because I'm a little bit pressed for time today. Um, husband's off doing grocery shopping and then when he gets back, um, you know, put the groceries away, grab some lunch, and then the dog has to go to the groomers because she's super stinky. Uh, she's very old, she's an Airedale. Occasionally you can hear her in the background because she does snort when she's not getting attention. Um, and she, right now she's laying at the back door because she was getting up and she was circling and she was making a whole bunch of noise as I was trying to do my videos. And so I just opened up the door for her and so she's laying there, she's calm now. And I think she knows because I have said, you know, I've talked about Molly's gonna go to get a bath and her ears perk up because she knows, she hates water. 
the two questions that I actually pulled are quote related. Um, and uh, so just Jennifer KY asked me, what is a good sewing machine for beginners? So I would say um, any of the singers, uh, the singer sewing machines or any of the brothers, the brother sewing machines, uh, you can get them at Joann's, you can get them at uh, Walmart, you can get them online. You don't have to spend a ton of money on your very first sewing machine. Uh, just because if you're not sure it's something that you're going to like to do, I would hate to say, oh, we'll go to a sewing machine store and buy a you know, $4,000 sewing machine. Um, usually, if you get a sewing machine that's $100, $200, $300, um, it'll be just fine. If it sews, if you can plug it in and you, you hit the foot pedal and it drives the, you know, the feed dogs pull the fabric through, you're good to go. Um, but don't go out and spend a ton of money on some big, you know, fancy with all the bells and whistles for your first sewing machine. Just get a, you know, a basic singer model or a basic brother model and you'll be totally fine. A Janome also has like a, a lower end one that um, you can get and it's totally fine. So I would just go find an inexpensive sewing machine. Um, as long as you can move the needle back and forth, um, it'll be fine. And all of them can do that. So um, yeah, just find something very inexpensive for your very first sewing um, and you'll be good. Um, and then Sharon Wolfgang asked if the Constitution quilt that I showed in my last video was good for a beginner quilt. I would say yes, because it is a log cabin and a log cabin quilt is very beginner friendly. This is what it looks like. And uh, these are, um, most quilters learn on a log cabin quilt. So this one would be just fine for beginners. Uh, there's not much in the way of directions. It's just cutting and straight piecing. So I would say that you could easily, if you're a beginner, you could do this, especially if you have just a little bit of a knowledge of how, um, you know, quilting goes, um, you'd be totally fine. So I would recommend, I would recommend it, honestly. Some of the other ones in the book, maybe not so much. Uh, for instance, the one that's on the cover, I mean, this is all half square. And uh, I wouldn't, s I would say that if you do, if your first quilt is like a half square triangle quilt, it can get a little confusing, especially when your points aren't meeting or you cut off some of your tips or, I mean, it's a lot of fussy stitching. And so I would say if you stick with like a log cabin, it's to it's very doable, it's very easy. Um, it's just all straight piecing. There's no half square triangles. There's nothing fancy. It's just straight stitching. So I would say a log cabin is the way to go. So. Anyway, now uh, let's move on to some happy mail. Um, so this last week I um, received a thank you card from Carol and she won one of my, uh, not mine, um, Rov Rovarius had sent me a couple of charts and I did a giveaway and Carol was one of the winners. And so she sent me this thank you card. And then she sent me this adorable little accordion pouch that she made with pumpkins. It's so cute. And it's going to go into my stitching basket because I do have like little, I could put uh, my needles in there and then I have a little pair of scissors and um, you know, just like little travel size things that I take when I take my stitching out in the wild. And so it is so perfect. It's gorgeous. Thank you so much, Carol. I absolutely love it. And now that I've shown it, now I can go start putting my sewing things in there, or my stitching things in there. So thank you so much. And then I received another thank you card from Pat and she also was one of the winners. It goes this way. It's so great. It's a, a quilt. It's the houses quilt. And I, I'm a sucker for a house quilt. I'm a sucker for houses on cross stitch. Uh, and I just love this card. I'm trying to um, determine if I want to put it in a frame and hang it out uh, where I quilt because I just love it. So thank you so much, Pat, for sending me the beautiful thank you card. I appreciate it so much. Over the past two weeks, I did decorate the house for Easter spring. Uh, this, uh, the seasonal tree here is more of a farm theme. Uh, it's a little on the naked side. I I think what happened was is 
last year when I took the spring tree down, I left some of the ornaments up and they got put in with the summer stuff because there's not a whole lot on this particular tree. The tree that's out in the other room is decorated for spring. And so I've got, or not spring, Easter. So it's got a lot of um, Easter and St. Patrick's Day on it out in that room. But this room, not so much. The only really spring thingy I have is the um, little monthly quilt that I hang up there. Um, and then over in the corner is my three-tiered tray, which I finally finished painting. Um, it was a tin color and I just kind of felt like it stuck out like a sore thumb. So I painted it like a dark barn red and it looks pretty good, but I don't have a whole lot to put in it. So I'm not really sure what I did last year. I, I went back and I looked through some of my pictures and I never took a picture of it decorated. So I don't know what it has, what it had in it. Um, I can't really find anything that would, I don't know what I did. So right now it also is sitting a little bit naked. Um, but over the past two weeks, I did have a finish. And in my last video, I showed that I was working on um, Home by Pineberry Lane. And I had a finish. Uh, so if you follow me on Instagram or my Facebook page, I already posted a picture of this. Um, I stitched it on a piece of 36 count ale with some of the called for colors except for the house is done in antique lace uh, by Gentle Arts. The frame is from Michaels and I stitched my piece uh, two over two just because I kind of like the texture of two over two. So I think it turned out fantastic. I love it and it felt really good to have a finish fully finished. Uh, it, it just felt really awesome after having, you know, cause working on such big projects, you don't really see, you only see like small sectional finishes. You don't have like an actual, like it's done. So I was happy to get that completely finished and it is out on the, um, there's a little, is it a buffet table? It's, it's a little like entryway table that's, um, out in the other room. And then I thought, since I had it out, I would show you this that I finished last spring. This is Lizzie Kate's Spring Small. Uh, I don't remember what I stitched it on, but I know that the thread used was DMC. And I fully finished it on a piece of mat board. I think it was, um, I think I was practicing lacing and it just pops out of this. There's no magnet, it just props up right there. The plan had been to stitch all of them in the series, but this is the only one that I have done and the only chart of the series that I have right now. So eventually down the road, I will get the other seasons and then I'll be able to display them similar to this. So my progress over the last two weeks has been um, not as much as I wanted. Um, and as I explained earlier, it was because I ended up being on the family search website and spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on there. And instead of dedicating it to, you know, instead of normally, you know, I'll, I'll stitch in the afternoon or the evening after I get done with everything, I'll usually try to stitch a little bit earlier, um, just so I can get a little bit more progress on everything. Um, and of course, none of that happened. I didn't even practice my banjo last night like I was supposed to. Yes, I'm still taking banjo lessons. Um, so first one I wanna talk about is uh, Queen of Freedom. Um, I had a message on my last video and one of the viewers said that uh, Queen of Freedom was out of print. And I was like, wow, well, I haven't. I thought, well, that's weird. I haven't, I, you know, not like I, you know, I'm in the know of things when they, you know, go out of print. But I did know that, you know, two weeks ago, um, I helped to, you know, I had two other viewers um, send me a message and ask, you know, what the name of the chart was and where they could get it. And I had sent them the link and it was at one, two, three stitch and it was in stock at that time. And that was only, you know, two weeks ago. Um, and so I hadn't, I mean, not that I would have even have heard that it had went out of print, but I thought, well, that's, that must have just happened. Uh, so I went and I looked at one, two, three stitch and it's out of stock. And a lot of the other places where I had seen it, it was out of stock. And so then I went to uh, Mirabilia's website because usually when a chart goes out of print, she pulls it from the website and it was still showing as, you know, it was still listed with all the other Queens that, you know, you can buy. Um, 
so I, and I haven't really seen anywhere, you know, I don't know if it, if it is out of print or if it's just tempor temporarily out of stock because uh, Nora Corbett has been, I, I think the last I heard she was, she had just done a retreat in Australia. Um, so I don't know if this is, is out of print now. Um, I would, I know that online I can't find it for sale anywhere except on eBay and it's going for like 50 bucks. So um, I guess you could, if you're interested in stitching this at all, I would say just to contact your LNS and see if they have it in stock. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's going out of print. Um, I'm glad that I did not, you know, suggest this as a stitch along because it would have been just like Sally Spencer. You know, you announce the stitch along and the next thing you know, it's out of print. So I'm so glad I never was like, hey, anyone want to do a stitch along? Um, anyway, so I hope it's not going out of print. Um, so I don't know. I, the only thing I knew to do was at one, two, three stitch, when something is out of stock, you can put your email in to be notified when it comes back into stock. So I did that. And so we'll see, but I hope, I hope it's not going out of print. Um, anyway, so here's my progress over the past two weeks. I've started on the bottom of her dress and she is looking fantastic. I absolutely love her. Um, I'm hoping to have her finished by summer. And I mean, really all I have to do is that bottom. Um, I think the flag, the flag down here has some fringe and then um, this continues down and then up. So yeah, I think she's looking awesome. I'm stitching her on a piece of 32 count vintage Sahara that I purchased from 123 Stitch. I'm using all the called for everything. And she's looking fabulous. I love her. And I really, really, I mean, it's very doable. If I keep on going, she's my weekend stitch. Um, so if I keep on going, I'm hoping that by summertime, um, I will have her done. Um, I, do, I haven't done any of the beading yet. I usually save the beading and the back stitching for last. And so once I finish all of the regular stitching, I will go back and add all the beads and all the back stitching. There's not a lot of back stitching, um, but I am very excited. And then I started on the first bonus block in the Anniversaries of the Heart series. This is a stitch along that I am doing with Deborah Canopy Stitches on Instagram. Um, a lot of you guys are, a lot of new people have joined, which is awesome. Um, and everyone seems to really, really be enjoying it, especially after you get past the first block, which tested everybody's patience. I can promise you the second block goes so much smoother. Um, and so far the third block is as well, or I should say the bonus block is as well. Um, the, uh, uh floss that I'm using. So, um, what happened was on, uh, was it Thursday? No, Wednesday night. After dinner, I was supposed to, before my banjo lesson, I was supposed to go in and pull the thread for the bonus block. And maybe it was Tuesday night. I think it was Tuesday night. No, last night was Thursday. It was Thursday night. It was yesterday. Um, I was supposed to go. I had the chart out and um, I had the threads and I was supposed to go, you know, through them and, you know, kit up the bonus block. And I didn't because I, I spent three hours hanging out with my dead relatives. <laughs> and so this was the only threads that I managed to pull. I ended up pulling these about 9.45. So I had something to stitch on for a little while. And um, these were the threads. I still, um, I think Endive is missing from this bundle. And I need to go pull it from uh, one of the, one of the ones I'm going to show you. Um, two of the thread colors I need are with this other project, and so I just need to pull that. Um, and here is my progress. So I have finished the second block. Um, I did it for my son Ethan because his birthday is in February. And I still get a lot of questions on the first block. So the first block is done after uh, my maternal great-grandmother. And these are her initials and her date of birth. I'm doing these with a mixture of DMC, some of the called for, some of the not called for. 
um, just kind of a little bit of everything that kind of looks similar to the color that's needed. The only change that I did was in the door of the house, um, I put a G in there for our last name. I think there's an S or like an S shape in there. And I just, I just eyeballed the G. And then of course I've got the border started for the bonus block. Um, I'm stitching it on a piece of 35 count sand that I picked up back in the summer from Willow Fabrics in the UK. Um, I think I forgot to mention the stitch alongs hashtag, which is BB Anniversaries 2020. Um, what else did I forget? I feel like I did, I did that little introduction a little bit wrong. Normally I say like the anniversaries of the heart and then I give all of the information for it and then I talk about it and I feel like I just kind of jumped ahead. Um, if you want to stitch them all on one piece, the bonus block is with number seven, Swan Lake. Um, there are only two bonus blocks. Um, so if you have all 12 of the charts, you have everything you need to stitch it all on one piece. Um, a lot of you guys are stitching it on one piece. There's a couple that are stitching it um, just like in smaller, um, you know, they might only have three of them together. Um, there's one that's only stitching 10. Um, so it's just kind of whatever, whatever you're feeling. Um, but I'm stitching mine on all one piece. It's a tight fit on the 35 count, but I didn't want to, it was either by buy this piece of fabric, which is the exact size I need, or buy a bigger piece of fabric and spend extra. And I just thought I can, I can squeeze it all on the one. It, there's, there's plenty, it'll have a two inch uh, border all the way around. So there's plenty of room. It's just when it gets to like the top and the bottom and the sides, it'll be kind of, it might be a little fiddly to work with, but it's coming along wonderfully. I'm enjoying it. Thank you to everybody who is joining along. It's so awesome that you guys are having fun with it. Um, some of you guys are um, holding off to add your relatives in until you kind of figure out um, who you want to go where. Um, you personalize it, go crazy personalizing it. You can even repeat names. Um, I think my kids will be repeated in my husband um, and my block. So. Um, just have fun with it. And if you're curious and you're like, well, I, I do kind of want to go see who my people were, uh, familysearch.org is a free website that you can go on and you can chart your family tree. Um, it is extremely addicting and uh, you will lose hours upon hours of your life. But I have a whole slew of relatives now that I can add not only in this one, but in, in others. Um, I'm down the road, hopefully sooner rather than later, I'm planning on stitching on Early Americans by Little House Needleworks. And I discovered that I have a Revolutionary War Colonel on my family tree and I'm putting his name on that. I'm just like, wow, that's so awesome. So, because in one of the little, you know, sometimes um, other relatives will go on and they'll put like little fun facts and he, um, received his orders from General Washington and General Washington's one of the early Americans. And so I'm like, I cannot wait to start stitching that and personalize it with his name. So anyway, I just went down a rabbit hole. So the next in my rotation has been uh, Father Christmas, Victorian Father Christmas by Stony Creek. Um, this is a stocking that I'm stitching for my husband, Brian. He's been waiting 20 years for his stocking and this is the year he's getting it. So here's my progress so far. Let me block the tree there for a second. Uh, when I first started stitching this, I had a little bit of trouble with the um, the dove because it, you know, I'm stitching on a piece of uh, 28 count white Lugana, and the dove was just blending in like crazy, and so I ended up stitch, um, stitching the dove, ripping it out, restitching it, ripping it out, restitching it three times before I finally got it right. Um, and so that kind of delayed my progress a little bit. And then this one, this is one that I rotate out every two weeks. And so it, in my last video, it had been out of my rotation. Um, but this is the progress that I made. I've got the tree started or the tree going and then the top of Santa's head. 
and so I am hoping to get a little bit farther, a little bit faster, and spend less time ripping out than putting in. So it's a lot of fun. I am stitching with all of the called for DMC. There's a couple strands of weeks in there as well as some thread works and uh, all of the, eventually all of the called for beads. So hoping to get that done by November 1st and anniversaries of the heart by December 31st. And I realize with anniversaries that I'm going to have to start picking up some steam because I'm only on the bonus block and it's March already and I haven't even got to the March block. So I need to, uh, I need to crack the whip a little bit. And then for my morning stitch, I have been working on Madame Cottontail. I started this on Monday. Um, and this is my progress so far. Um, I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count Wren. Picture this plus that I picked up from 123 Stitch. I was working on it. All I did this morning was just that little spot of blue. That's all I did. Uh, because I realized that I needed to do my video and so I needed to press all the fabric. I was supposed to do it last night. <laughs> One of the things that didn't happen. Um, this needle minder is Mr. Bean dressed as a stitching woman and I got it from Mad for Minders. I haven't seen it on there in a while, um, but every once in a while, I think for a long time it was sold out and then it just happened to come in back in stock and that's when I was able to snag it. So every once in a while they'll put it in stock. Um, I'm stitching it with some of the called for and some that I have subbed in. And so here is my bundle. Some of these I robbed from Anniversaries of the Heart because I don't need it right now, except for Endive. <laughs> and then um, I also stole from Olga Stocking. And so some of these are the called for, some of them are the not called for. And the floss tag is one that was given to me at Fall Fling, uh, Gazelle's Needlework. They passed them out and I love it. And uh, yeah, I haven't started collecting those yet, but it's very tempting because so many, so many shops on Etsy are now starting to offer them. Like, do I need it? Do I not? Uh, this one that I have on um, anniversaries, that was actually a necklace. Um, I got one year for Christmas and I don't, I don't wear this type of jewelry and it was just sitting in my uh, jewelry box. And I thought, why can't I just stick it on as a floss tag? So yeah, it was just a, it was, it was just a necklace at one time. So now at least it's being used. In my last video, I had a giveaway. It was for this uh, springtime project bag. Um, I had hit 4,000 subscribers um, the video before. And unfortunately, because I didn't get my act together, I didn't have a giveaway for that video to celebrate the milestone. And so in my last video, I made a spring bag. It was a little bit, I mean, better late than never, but I always feel like it's important to celebrate those milestones. And I appreciate everybody who subscribes to my channel, who watches my videos, who comments, who follows me on Instagram and Facebook. I appreciate it so, so much. And so um, I offered this one up as a giveaway in that video. And the winner is Mary Nelson. So congratulations, Mary. Um, if you could get a hold of me via email at pumpkinhollowquilting at gmail.com, I will do my best to get it in the mail to you next week. Um, thank you so much for playing. I think my giveaway question was, what is your favorite spring flower? And a lot of you guys like tulips. There was a couple of you guys that must live in my area because you knew about the uh, the Woodburn Tulip Farm that is not too far from my house. I, I, it's really not. It's maybe, you know, as the crow flies across the fields, it's maybe five miles from my house. Um, and I've never been there, but yeah, there was like two or three of you guys that um, are planning a trip out there. So you must live in my area, which is which is really cool. Maybe we should get together and stitch. Um, anyway, so um, I also hit another milestone um, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead, you know, because I, um, you know, I, I always feel like each milestone needs to be celebrated. And so I hit 4,300 subscribers and I just appreciate it so much. It's just so beyond anything that I had ever, you know, thought. I mean, of course I'd hoped for it, but 
Um, I'm just so grateful to all of you guys. And so I have another spring project bag to give away. Uh, this is actually vintage lace. Uh, what had happened was, is one of my friends, one of my quilting friends, her mother-in-law passed away. And so she had a bunch of cross stitching stuff. And so she gave me this big tub full of, um, there's like some Ada and linen and there's some uh, lavender and lace charts in there as well as some um, kits. And I was gonna show it in this video, but I ran out of time <laughs> to gather all that stuff up. So I will show that in my next video. Anyway, so this bag just has spring flowers with cute birds. This is what the back looks like. I love this fabric. I believe it's from Adorn It. And so very, very cute. And so the giveaway question that I would like to know is, with Nashville Needlework Market happening this weekend, a lot of the designers have been showing sneak peeks of what it is that they are releasing. And so I would like to know what is a new release that you've seen um, that you uh, must have when it comes out. Now, it doesn't mean, I mean, I don't expect you to run out and you know buy it. I just wanna know something that um, you saw that really calls to you and you really love it and you want to stitch it and um, I want to know. Uh, so I have been really, really good. I have only, I've only pre-ordered six charts. Hear me out. Hear me out. So um, from Acorns and Threads, I pre-ordered four of the Brenda Gervais charts because I, I love them. And then um, last week I saw that... Um, Plum Street Samplers and the Scarlet House had released their um, market releases or what they're going to be releasing at market. And so I bought one chart from Plum Street and one chart from the Scarlet House. And that's it. I'm, you know, I'm like, there's plenty more. Like Stacy Nash just released another in the Hollyberry Farm series. I think it's Stables at Hollyberry Farm. And I really love it. But I thought, I'm just going to stick with the six that I got. Um, and maybe when I get some of those stitched, or maybe when I get some of this other stuff stitched, um, I will purchase those down the road. Unless I hear it's only gonna be like a Nashville exclusive and what's out there is out there, then I, I probably will uh, buy it. But so far, none of the stuff that I, I really like, um, it's just regular charts being released. And so I'm very excited. The only sad thing is that, um, uh, Plum Street, I thought maybe she was going to release the sister piece to the Heritage Sampler, and I haven't seen that yet. So may, I'm still hopeful that it'll be a release soon, um, because I know it was like a retreat um, exclusive um, a couple of years back, and so I'm hopeful that, you know, maybe. Um, but um, other than that, I'm going to stick with the six. I'm going to be really good, and I uh, I don't know that they're gonna make it into my rotation, except maybe one. There's like one or two of the Brenda Gervais charts that I'm like, I, I need to stitch those. Maybe not as soon as they get here, but shortly after they arrive. So anyway, so down below in the comments, I want you to tell me what uh, you saw that appealed to you at market. And then in my next video, I will pull a winner and I will announce it for the project bag. So I am going to pause the video again. I have two quilts that I am going to show. So if you are not interested in seeing it, um, thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you in two weeks. Otherwise, hold tight while I go pull the quilts. Okay, so I had to run out to the dungeon because I had brought in the directions, but I didn't bring in the picture of the quilt I made. Uh, so in my last video, I talked about this uh, quilt pattern and then some fabric that I picked up from a local quilt shop. So this is called Sweet Sweet Red Bird by uh, Liberty Star and the designer is Renee Plains and a lot of you guys knew who she was or is um, and they gave me some great suggestions for books that she uh, published and you've made some of her quilts before. I really enjoyed making the quilt and so I have finished it. I just haven't quilted it yet. So here is my quilt. I did it with all of Kim Deal fabrics uh, from two completely separate lines. And 
I am, um, it is going to be a wall quilt. So it is going to go out into the other room. And um, once I get it quilted, <laughs> I have backing for it now. In fact, I went to Joann's yesterday. Joann's was having a 40% off sale off of their keepsake, which is like their main fabric line. Um, they had 40% off and then they had another 25% off your purchase and so I was able to buy four quilt backings for four quilts and so hopefully my plan is in my next video to have four quilts that are completely quilted to show you so I really hope that I'm able to stick to that because besides the four quilts there's two other ones out there that um, I have a uh, we bought a sheet set and we put it on our bed and we didn't really like the sheet set and so um you know it's practically brand new and so i decided i'm going to cut it up and use it for two of the quilt backings and i i know that some of the quilters out there are probably going oh you're using that what um i have quilted many quilts where the quilter has brought me a um a sheet set or like a you know like the top sheet um, they quilt up just fine the only ones that won't quilt up very good are the satin ones but if you use the cotton sheets or the cotton blend they quilt up just as well as if you went down to the fabric store and you bought um, you know several yards of fabric so I have used especially on the king size because the king size quilts it can get pretty pricey and I feel like you can never get just enough for those king size backings. You still have to add like a bottom and a side. And so if you just go and you buy the king size top sheet, it's the, it's the size you need. So anyway, I know, I know I can hear the quilters out there groaning because you're not supposed to use, you know, sheets and it has something to do with the way that the sheets are woven. But honestly, it's the same cotton that you use for your, at the quilt shop. So. I know, I know. Uh, so the second quilt is just this little mini quilt. I think I showed it last year. Um, this is Patchwork Peter Rabbit, I think. Um, I got it off of Craftsy a couple of years ago. I don't know if it's still available. I think Craftsy became Blueprint. Um, but if you, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. And if I can't, it's just Patchwork Peter Rabbit. Um, I just use kind of a spring uh, mini charm pack to make him and then I top stitched, I fused him, top stitched him and then this is um, some minky and then I quilted him on my quilt machine. So it turned out great and I enjoy having him out every, well for the last couple of years um, and I will do my best to, if I can find it I will link it down below. Um, one thing before I go, um, I, so I was supposed to be a little bit better about adding bags into my shop and I, I did last week, um, and there's a few in there right now. Um, and there's a couple that are waiting to be photographed. Um, my plan, and let me pull the, the stack. So I went to Joann's cause they did have a sale and I bought all of this fabric and all of this fabric is going to make bags. And so over the next week to two weeks, all of these will be going into the shop. And so I thought I would just show them. So this is just a little, um, so it basically goes like this. Um, so I just, I went, a lot of it's spring and I'll just flash them really quick cause I know, so it's just that one, um, that, that, this, this one, this one. I know they're upside down, but I, I know a lot of you guys probably don't want to see this, um, but these are the um, bags that will be making their way into the shop. So if you're interested, um, just keep an eye on the shop. I promise they will be going in. I'm going to do my best to stay off those ancestry sites because they get me in so much trouble. So I will be adding those into the shop and I also have some more out there that are ready to be cut, some summary ones. So just keep an eye on the shop. If you're interested, I will put a link to my shop down below and you can, you know, go check out and see what's in there and just, you know, keep an eye on it. Um, I usually upload later in the evening or sometimes earlier in the morning. So late evening, early morning is usually when I am putting them into the shop. 
So um, I that about wraps it up for me for this video. Um, I hope that you have a great couple of weeks. I'll be back in two weeks. So I hope you have a great couple of stitchy weeks. I hope that you don't go quite as crazy. Well, I wouldn't say that I necessarily went crazy with Market because I technically have only purchased two of them. The other four I've only pre-ordered um, up at Acorns and Threads. Next Friday, Acorns and Threads is having their Market Day. And so I'm planning on going up there just to kind of see what Janine brought back and then, you know, to pick up the charts that I ordered. I don't know when I'm going up there. Um, since I'm an Acorn member, I I have early access at like nine o'clock, but I don't know that I'm gonna make it up there that early um, with getting Ethan off to school and all the things. So, but at some point on Friday in the morning, I'll make my way up there to see uh, what she brought back. Um, if you're going up there, I would love to uh, meet you. That would be fun. Um, but yeah, I'll be back in two weeks as usual. Um, and I will show you what I purchased. Um, the other two charts I bought from uh, the Cottage Needle on Etsy. I think that's her name. Um, and those were the Plum Street and the uh, Scarlet House that I pre-ordered. So um, anyway, so I will be back and I will show you what I picked up. And uh, hopefully I'll have more progress to show you on everything. Um, I don't foresee anything rotating in except for maybe Brian's stocking might rotate out, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to rotate in its place yet. Um, I haven't decided yet. There's a lot. There's, there's so much that I want to stitch and there's only so many hours in the day to do it. And I, I wish that I could just sit down and dedicate all day to stitching, but I can't, I wish I could. Um, anyway, so if you would like to see what I'm up to in between the two weeks, um, you can follow me on Instagram at Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I have a Facebook page, Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. Sorry, that was my dog. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> I thought she, she's very old. She is an Airedale Terrier and she will turn 12 in um, April. And so she has a little bit of arthritis. And when she walks uh, between like the, the living room and this room, there's a linoleum and her back leg sometimes, her feet will slip. And yeah, uh, we love her. She's so sweet. And um, she's not very, I don't think she's very excited. She's gonna get a bath. I'm excited because she stinks. <laughs> anyway. So um, if you'd like to follow me on Facebook, it's Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. Uh, my Etsy shop is Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to email me. There's Molly right there. Molly! There she is right there. <laughs> um, you are welcome to email me at Pumpkin Hollow Quilting or leave the comment below. And I will do my best to either answer it right then and there or in my next video. So I hope you guys have a great couple of weeks. If I forgot anything, I'm really, really sorry. I know my husband's gonna be coming home very, very soon. And I saw that Allison sent me a message and I'm wondering if she's on her way. Um, so, um, but other than that, have a great couple of weeks and I will chat again with you very soon. Bye guys.